is so silly. What are we doing? We're sleeping outside, outrunning a storm, eating extremely expensive dehydrated food, and pooping in bags. This may be the biggest video I have ever made. This box is packed full of ultralight backpacking gear that was chosen for me by other famous outdoor YouTubers. And in this video, I'm gonna show you what they picked. And I'm also going to take all of this gear on a four day backpacking trip through the Utah wilderness. Let's start by unboxing all of this backpacking gear and seeing what the YouTubers picked for me. Woo! This is my show, gosh darn. Everything in this box is from a company called Garage Grown Gear. And Garage Grown Gear is actually sponsoring this video. Many of us outdoor YouTubers use stuff from Garage Grown Gear because they sell a ton of ultralight backpacking gear from small cottage brands. There is one piece of gear that is mine that I am taking with me, and that is my custom light AF rainbow pack. We're gonna load all this stuff into this pretty little baby. Bye pack, I will see you soon. With that, let's open this box. Are we ready for this? Ha. Oh man. So we are starting right off the bat with the hammock gear burrow quilt, which was picked for me by Kyle Hates Hiking. I asked him to pick for me my sleep system and he gave me basically exactly what he took on his AT through hike, which was the burrow quilt, the Sea to Summit Eros pillow and the Thermarest X Lite sleeping pad. This isn't in this box because I already owned it. So I wasn't gonna get another one. Kyle also had very specific instructions for me that I had to bring the Thermarest X Lite and I had to use my own breath to blow it up. No pump sack, no tiny pump. I just like to fill my pads with a bunch of like hot, moist air from my lungs. That's how I prefer to do it. The thing I'm a little bit skeptical about is this Eros pillow. I'm a little skeptical of testing out this pillow because I do love my Nemo Filla pillow so much, but Kyle Hates Hiking chose it and I am listening to Kyle. Let's move on. The next YouTuber that I reached out to is one of my close friends and that is Dan Becker. I had Dan Becker choose my entire water filtration system, but I also let Dan pick my water containers and I do regret that choice. Dan picked for me, the Canuck two liter reservoir bag, which I already owned and use. Sawyer squeeze water filter, which I also already own and use. And unfortunately, two smart water bottles. If you didn't know this, you know it now. I despise these things. For whatever reason, backpackers just love smart water bottles. I don't understand. Maybe I just hate them on the principle of the thing and then I'll use them and I'll be like, eh, they're not that bad. And then eventually I'll love them, but I doubt it. They're evil. I think that you are gonna love them. And I love the Noct Vecto uh, water bag because it's like the easiest way to filter water. Cool, yeah. The next YouTuber that I reached out to is Amanda Outside. Amanda Outside's channel largely focuses on cooking and backpacking food. So I had her pick my entire cook kit. Now a lot of the stuff that Amanda chose is actually stuff that I already use, including Pink Magic Hands, my titanium spork, my Snow Peak Ultralight Pot, and the MSR Pocket Rocket Stove. Now there's one more thing that Amanda chose for me, and that is an insulated food pouch from Big Sky International. Amanda told me that she uses these all the time to help keep her food warm, and especially because I'm gonna be backpacking in an area that's gonna get quite cold at night, this should work fantastically. The next two YouTubers that I reached out to, I asked to select a couple of small accessories from Garage Grown Gear that they do not leave home without. So let's start with Justin Outdoors. Justin told me to bring sport caps. There are some backpackers who will actually buy water bottles specifically for these sport caps, and then they'll take these caps off and they'll put them on the smart water bottles. So he told me to just cut out the middleman and buy the sport caps from Garage Grid Gear. Justin also gave me two recommendations for staying clean and keeping up hygiene on the trail. And that was to use Summit Suds powdered soap and Huppy toothpaste tabs. Next, I reached out to Taylor the New Hampshire hiker, but a lot of the gear that she uses is stuff that I already use. But there was one extra thing that Taylor recommended that I am so excited about. That is Torrid Booties from Enlightened Equipment. These are little like insulated sock booties. I just think they're so cute. Now there's one more piece of gear that was chosen for me by a famous YouTuber. And if you haven't guessed yet, it's my shelter. And it might be the most exciting piece of gear that I'm taking on this trip. But before I talk about that, I need to get on a plane. Zoom, zoom, cue montage. Here we go. We have 
arrived at our final destination and where I'll be backpacking for the next four days. But before I start hiking, I told you I would tell you the final piece of gear that was chosen for me by a famous YouTuber, and that is my shelter. What I have with me is the rainbow tarp tent. And this shelter was picked for me by none other than Eric Hansen. La, da, da, da. <laughs> was I a little slow? <laughs> I think I missed the cue. Hey, here we go. <laughs> I am thrilled to be here and that you took me up on uh, my offer to come out this way. Oh my gosh, absolutely. So we are currently in Buckskin Gulch in Utah. We are going to be hiking 40 miles through this canyon, headed into Perea Canyon. We've actually come in several miles already, and we still have probably over 10 miles to go mm -hmm. until we get to camp tonight. Hopefully we get to camp with enough time to set up camp in the daylight. I hope so. Means we might need to go. Okay, all right. <laughs> with that, let's go. All right. This is sage, and if you touch it, you blow your fingers. <laughs> yeah, I love your passion for the smell. Yeah. The only thing I'm concerned about is that we still have 13 miles to go. <laughs> <laughs> A whiz. We just left the trailhead like 100 feet ago. Actually, 200 feet now. For Sage at 100 feet, and now a, now a urination at 200 feet. We're doing great. <laughs> so we just left the trailhead, and we are headed into Perea Canyon. So I have here Eric, obviously, and also, woo, that guy. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, there's a ladder. Whoa! Wow! Wow! That was so cool! Yes! I'm excited! <laughs> Look at this view! Oh my god! It just opens up like this! Oh my gosh! So this, this area would have been, you know, inhabited yeah. historically. This is amazing! Up there. Oh yeah! Up there! Yeah. As I'm sure you have already guessed, I am very easily impressed by stuff. All right, Miranda, you see that log? Do you know how that got there? <gasps> Did it get a flash flood? That's a flash flood. So that is an indicator as to how deep the water will be if we were in here at the wrong time. The water could be 100 feet deep. I mean, that's why it's so dangerous. Yeah. But luckily, not monsoon season. Right. <laughs> so we should be okay. We have quite a long trek before we get to camp. We should come to a spring in about well, like 13 miles from the trailhead. Shortly after that will be where we are camping. See, this is what I don't like about this. It's like, a, it's like the smart water bottle's right here. When I turn my head, if I'm like, oh wow, it's like, and Dan told me, he was like, you just learn to deal with it. You just learn to like look around it or whatever. Dan, this is your fault. Dan, it feels like a microphone. I'm like, earth to Dan. I will say it's very convenient to have my water bottles right here. I just wish that I had that Canuck soft-sided bottle so that as I was drinking, it would get smaller and smaller instead of having this big clunky plastic thing. My hatred of smart water bottles continues. I think my favorite thing so far is when we come up to like turn a corner and we get to sections where the sun is just to the perfect spot. Just creates these beautiful angles. We just stopped for a quick break in the canyon here. We probably have about maybe five more miles before we get to water. So I'm actually gonna refill my smart water bottle using this Canuck two liter bag that still has clean water that I brought from the trailhead. This is actually something that I use on my normal hikes, but it's also what Dan recommended that I take. He just insisted that I also take this smart water bottle. And this little bottle cap is actually a suggestion of Justin Outdoors. So far, I'm loving it. I think it's a really good system. This bag was full of clean water and I had washed it right before the trip. But as soon as we get to our water source, I will be putting dirty water in here. So in order to take the water from this bag into the smart water bottles, I will have to use my water filter, which is the Sawyer squeeze. And we are quickly running out of daylight. So I'm gonna cold soak some nudes and then uh, we'll keep going. You're gonna what? Cold soak some nudes. That's buggy. Uh, uh, all right. Lots to go still.
You want to go just up, up here? That sounds like the safer way, but Let's it might not be the more fun way. <laughs> We're going to go the safe way. You wrapped my droid. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, why do you hate fun, Miranda? Wow, a little temper tantrum men over here. <laughs> One important and unique thing about this trip is that you cannot bury your human waste. No. Which means you have to carry all of your poop out with you. And I actually have a designated poop bag right there. I saw that. That's cool. That? That's awesome. So now I know where I'm stashing my poop. No, 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 no. You are the designated carrier. Mm -mm -mm. No, no, no. You have the bag. No, no, no. Uh uh. But we do have four days worth of poop to carry out. Collectively, that's 12 days of poop. <laughs> I do think that when we get back to the trailhead, we should weigh all of our poop. Oh, absolutely. I will win. I will win. <laughs> Guys, if I find extra poop in my poop bag, th there's only two people who could have done it. Oh, are you uh, drinking your nudes? Just drinking my nudes water. Good nudie juice. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We should be in marketing. <laughs> if you're curious, it doesn't taste good. We have officially reached a section in the canyon where we're gonna be in the mud. You're actually excited about this? I'm actually, really, are you not? It just means that from here on out, we're gonna have wet, muddy shoes. We're probably gonna be cold. Gonna be a great time. <laughs> oh, it is cold. You're right. That was so cool. <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. Pause. Tumbleweed. I love what you get excited about <laughs> in the West. You're excited about things that are like very everyday occurrences in my life. Okay, but we haven't seen tumbleweed for like at least two miles. This is true. So we are moving through this canyon, what feels like pretty quickly. The trail is not like challenging in terms of elevation, but it is challenging in terms of the terrain. Very slippery. Eric is already very far ahead. His legs are like 19,000 feet long. He's like 80% legs and like 20% cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> we can edit that out. Yeah, cut that out of the, oh God. See, this is what happens. I'm gonna say cut this out of the video because I've said cut this out of the video, Abby's gonna intentionally keep it in the video. <laughs> okay. Never say that in the editor. I know. Always they always do. Really quick question. Yeah. Why did you choose the rainbow tarp tent? It had the most unique <laughs> and curious design that I really wanted to see in person. Like the semi freestanding, freestanding kind of convertible. Uh, and I really like the price point. It's like totally. at a price point that I feel is very approachable to a lot of people who want to go light, who want to kind of try to dabble with like ultralight style and not have to spend your entire budget on Seriously. the Seriously. Well, I can say that I am super excited about it too. What a day! On the bottom of the canyon floor grows a small plant. The plant reaches for the fleeting sunlight that comes through. The change happens not at all, and then all at once. <laughs> that was perfect. That was great. You're hired. OK, we just turned the corner here. We came up on this section where the canyon walls themselves bend and move and create this kind of rolling mountain-like terrain on either side of our path. spooky. I feel like there is a sort of bizarre, almost like uncanny feeling that I get hiking through here because so many of the passageways through this canyon, like so many of the sections look so similar because we can't see the horizon line at all. There is really no way to know how far we've gone, where we are, how much further we have to go and it's a very bizarre, weird feeling. This is really just our first day on this trip, and already I'm kind of boggled by how different this feels from any other backpacking trip that I've done. Whew. Wow, it's dark in here. Oh my gosh. So many parts of this hike 
have just been weaving and turning. You go left and you go right, and you turn back again. This is actually the middle escape route. So this is the only place in this whole canyon system where we could get out without having to retrace or finish where we're finishing. What that also means is we're only halfway for the day. Woo, we gotta go We got fast. some miles to go. Oh, damn. Yeah. So we just got to a section here in the canyon where there's about a 20 foot drop. And the only way down is to use these ropes that have been rigged up with knots in them. It looks pretty scary, honestly. This is a bigger drop than last time I was here. Whew. Yeah. All right, who wants to go first? We can go first. You ready? Guinea pig. <laughs> Double, double rope. Nice. So far, so good. Nice. Nice. You down? Not too bad, not too bad. Sick. Good yeah. work, dude. Woohoo! Holy shit! You got this. You want to shed pack weight? Oh my god! I do want to shed pack weight. Yeah. It's scary, dude. Yeah. Dude, that scared me so bad. There we go. Yeah. Oh. So you okay? Yeah. Okay. Eric just pointed out that there's water coming out of the canyon floor, which means that we're getting much closer to the confluence where this canyon hits another canyon, and that means... Camp! Woo! <laughs> and fresh water for drinking. I thought you were gonna say french fries. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> woo! We must be getting close. I'm excited. Woo woo! Wow! <gasps> We just reached the confluence. We're gonna peek around the corner of the confluence here. Looks like there might be a sandbar, which means camping. This is really nice to enjoy the morning light in, a, in this part of the canyon. That feeling of the pack coming off is so good. We have finally made it to camp. You brought a chair? Of course I brought a chair now. I'm so jealous. We're gonna set up this tarp tent. Chosen for me by none other than the Eric Hansen. <laughs> I'm actually really excited yeah. for you to, to try it and I want to see it. I don't know if you know this about me, Eric, but I'm like constantly on the quest for the perfect tent. Tell me more. Why don't we bring a chair? <laughs> I like, I see why they call it the rainbow. I do feel like it was a really big miss to call it the rainbow and not have this part of the tent be rainbow. Yeah, come on. You made a good choice, dude. Well, I, I know my way around a tent. <laughs> I've seen a tent or two in my day. Yeah, that's right. Go. Cool. All right. This is for you, Kyle. Have I been doing anything? So we had a really long day of hiking today. We wound up getting into camp pretty late 
It was already getting dark by the time we got here. We kind of cooked dinner and set up and how are heading to bed. Tomorrow, I'm gonna have a ton more time to show you all of the new stuff that I'm bringing recommended to me by other outdoor YouTubers. One thing I'm kind of excited about is actually testing this hammock gear burrow quilt. And I'm guessing the temperatures are gonna drop close to freezing tonight. So uh, we'll see if this keeps me warm. Today was awesome. To get to not only be trying new gear, but also have one of my favorite outdoor YouTubers, Eric Hansen here, to show me his favorite place. I think that's really been neat today. And if tomorrow is anything like today, it's going to be gorgeous and it's gonna be really fun. Okay, good night. It's about 7.30 right now. I think I'm gonna start in on making some coffee here pretty soon. Woo, day two. Come on, get up, it's 5.15. <laughs> Is it 5.15? No, it's almost eight. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Whoa, we are lazy sluggards. Yeah, we deserved it. I think so. We're getting ready to pack up camp, but before we get going, I told you I would show you my tent set up in my sleep system. So this is the tarp tent rainbow one person tent. I set this tent up in freestanding mode last night. You can see I'm using two trekking poles and those create the front and back edges of my tent and they sort of tension out the points of the tent. Tonight, I'm going to actually stake this tent out fully because one of the issues I had with it in freestanding mode was that these edges of the tent kind of collapsed in on me a little bit purely because there was nothing tensioning it this direction, only tensioning it this direction. I will say that this tent is hugely spacious for a one person tent. I did miss having mesh top to a tent. Like I couldn't look out and see the stars. I mean, yeah, look, my initial impressions of the tarp tent rainbow are that it's really spacious. The peak height is really, really tall. It's super easy to set up and I don't really have a ton of complaints about it right now at all. As far as one person tents go, so far I'm really impressed. So my sleep system was chosen for me by Kyle Hates Hiking, and this is the exact sleep system that he used on the PCT. So I have here the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite NXT pad. This sleep pad is really comfortable, frankly. If I'm being honest, I can't tell much difference between this sleeping pad and the Nemo Tensor. The only difference is this one is mummy shaped. The Nemo Tensor, which is the sleeping pad that I normally use, is rectangular. But aside from that, it feels basically the same as my usual sleeping pad. The pillow that I'm using is the Sea to Summit Eros Ultralight regular pillow. I'm not sure how I feel about this pillow just yet. I definitely missed my Nemo Philo. There's something about this pillow that feels much more like a travel pillow, whereas the Philo is this rectangular thing. It feels more like a pillow from home. It's a little softer, but I didn't hate it. And I do like how small it packs. It packs down into this tiny little bag. Boop. One thing I think is super cool about this is Sea to Summit has actually designed this so that it locks onto their sleeping pads. Since I don't have a Sea to Summit sleeping pad, I'm using a Thermarest sleeping pad, I actually could not get this to stay on my sleeping pad. And I wound up taking my hoodie that I'm wearing and I slid that over the top of my sleeping pad and then I slid this into the hoodie. And that worked actually really, really well. It did mean that I was drooling on my clothing. You talk like drooling is just what everyone does when they sleep. It is. I don't drool. You don't drool in your sleep? No. Eric, do you drool in your sleep? Uh, only on Tuesdays. Hang on, I am convinced that everybody drools in their sleep. That's part of sleeping, is drooling. That's true. Right? Thank yeah. you, Eric agrees. Okay, let me know in the comments. If you're a sleep drooler, I wanna know about it. The last thing is my quilt. So I use the Hammock Gear Burrow Zero Degree 850 Fill Power Quilt. So the one that Kyle actually recommended to me is the 20 degree quilt, but our temperature here is quite chilly. So I opted for the zero degree instead, and I felt pretty cold last night. Specifically, I felt cold kind of in my like butt zone. I'm not sure if the reason that I was cold was because of my sleeping pad or if it was because I was using this quilt incorrectly, but I am right now a little concerned about the fact that I was so cold. So I'm definitely hoping that I stay warm the next couple of nights. I haven't yet formed an opinion about this quilt because I feel like something happened last night that I maybe did wrong 
to have me be cold. With that, um, I am officially the least packed up person on our team, so I'm gonna start packing my stuff. Today we have nine miles of hiking, and we are mostly going to be in and out of this water here, which is running through Paria Canyon. You might notice I am wearing neoprene socks. These are to help keep my feet warm in the water. Uh, I did poop last night, and my poop is right there. It's like mostly smell free, but every once in a while, I'll just get like a little whiff of poop. Shall we? Yes. It also could be, I'm farting. Uh, <laughs> but it's, let's blame the poop bag. Yeah, let's blame the poop bag. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> I love this. There are these little cacti that are on this cliffside. If you close your eyes and you picture cactus, this is what you imagine. They're just perfect, perfect little cacti. Wow, look at that. There's this huge hole. You can almost see where when a flood came through, those layers of rock would have just been pulled away. It's humbling, that's for sure. Woo! I just got to a section where the water is super, super deep. Wow, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> oh man. My goal for today is to share a little bit more about my cooking system and my water filtration system. I will keep checking in with you all as we go today. Eric and I are hoping to get to camp a little bit early tonight so we have more time to talk about gear, to share some of our own experiences on this trail, and of course, for me, to let you all know more about the gear that was chosen for me by the other YouTubers. Yay, hiking! This canyon that we're in right now is very different than the slot canyon that we were in yesterday. So this is Perea Canyon. This entire canyon is formed by water and flooding coming through and carving out these really intricate winding canyons. I will say it is nice to see some plants. Yesterday was awesome, but uh, we didn't really see a lot of greens. And now I feel like we're finally seeing a little bit more life down in the canyon. We got a spring here. Oh, no way, there's even a fish <gasps> living in this little spring. Well, gosh, that's right. I need to filter some water. The, well, this is a perfect place. Let's it's not do it. Sedimenty. All right. Ooh, water filter time. Wow. So much cleaner than yesterday. This is the Dan Becker filter system. Canock, two liter bag, Sawyer squeeze filter, connector cap, and smart water bottle. My Sawyer squeeze got really clogged yesterday, filtering from that super silty water. I'm gonna filter as much as I can, and then I'm gonna fill this up again and try and do a little backflush. I'm just gonna say it. I don't hate the smart water bottles. They're actually really handy. Like I can easily get to them with this pack. They're right on the shoulder strap. Definitely having a hard-sided bottle with this little sport cap is really useful. Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> See, you have a system though that I think I would like. Like Eric has one smart water bottle and one Nalgene. I filter into this. Yeah. And then I put electrolytes and drink okay. out of this. The slender profile is easier for getting in and out of pockets and stuff like that. It totally is. Yeah, yeah it's a lot easier. This little sport cap was recommended to me by Justin Outdoors. It just makes like drinking and walking so easy. I can just pull this out, unpop this, chug some water and then put it away. Maybe we should all just email Nalgene and say, make a Nalgene that's this size with this type of top, okay? Let's go. Whoa, look at this rock. It's got orange and you get a pale yellow, a light blue, a dark blue. Cool rock. <laughs> that is a cool rock. <laughs> okay. Leave no trace. Whoa, look at that green in there. Hey Miranda. Yeah? What's that look like behind you? A butthole. <laughs> That's like borderline too butthole-like. Do you know what I mean? I feel like nature was a bit too on the nose with that one. It's too, it's too butthole-like. Oh my gosh. We have an actual flowing spring. You just get from that, that is pure. I've never done that before. No? Nope. I mean, this is the world's biggest water filter. 
I'm gonna do it. I'm not saying you should do this. Don't go getting Giardia and blaming me and Eric Hansen, but I'm <laughs> yeah. gonna do it. <laughs> so my general rule is if you can see the source and get directly from it, before there's an opportunity for contaminants, you're okay. So it's coming right out of the rock, so you can put the water bottle right under it and get that pure water. <sighs> Tastes great. <laughs> All right, well, if I put my pants aggressively, we know whose fault it is. <laughs> Fresh water, shall we boogie friends? We just came around the corner to this wall of rock that is massive. It's like hard to, to explain. Eric and I both were in awe. It's just this enormous curving wall. This place is amazing. That little bird that's jumping around on those rocks is the canyon wren. I love canyon country and their sound, their call, is like the quintessential sound of the desert. On, on the floor <clears throat> of the Perea Canyon, <clears throat> the canyon wren. So, a sound echoes from the walls. <clears throat> Here in the canyons of the Southwest, a tiny bird fills the canyon with song. For those patient, they may hear this magical sound, like a lyre, a flute, a minstrel, singing its song, luring you deeper into the heart of canyon country. I think you out Attenborough to Attenborough. <laughs> yes! <laughs> We are getting really close to camp. At this point, we're just, we're so we can, so close we can taste it. We may have just found a good campsite. It's exploring time. My God, this is so bizarre. Like a grove of trees. All right, we found our campsite. Hi, yeah. Good job today. Thank you, Way to make you. it. This has been such a cool day. Yeah, this is awesome. I mean, this wall right here is so cool. I really appreciate your appreciation for this place as well. The I, way in which you share it is very, very infectious. It's cool. I appreciate your appreciation of my appreciation. <laughs> <laughs> Eric went to poop. So while he's pooping, I'm sitting in his chair. And uh, I'm wishing that he had suggested that I bring this chair because it's amazing. And I'm going to put on my Enlightened Equipment booties recommended to me by Taylor. The only thing that's my own is my winning personality. Oh, these are so cozy. I've decided that officially my favorite camp shoe version is these booties and my Teva original sandals. It's seriously so cozy. Oh. So my soaking wet neoprene socks. It did keep my feet very, very warm. Abby, make sure you blur out this foot shot. I don't give that away for free anymore. It's like a sleeping bag for your feet. So I'm getting set up to make some dinner. Most of this stuff was recommended to me by Amanda Outside, who is an awesome outdoor YouTuber who primarily focuses on, or at least is really well known for her food and camping recipes. Amanda and I actually have an incredibly similar setup. So I'm using a lot of my own stuff. My MSR pocket rocket stove, my snow peak pot. This is the 750 milliliter pot. Amanda is actually telling me that she will sometimes carry an 1100 milliliter pot. And her reasoning for that is that she can boil enough water at one time for food as well as for a beverage, and sometimes even be able to boil enough water for two meals. I'm also using this long spork. Amanda told me this, and both of us agree on this. Having a long spork to be able to get to the bottom of your food bag is so handy and so, so, so nice. A lot of the stuff that I'm using that Amanda recommended is again, stuff that I'm really familiar with, but one piece of gear that she recommended that I used and loved last night is this insulated food bag from Big Sky International. So this bag weighs almost nothing. 
and it's essentially just a reflective pouch. You like take your food bag, say this had water in it, it was ready to go. I would slide this in here, boop, close it up, boop, hold it. And this would help to keep the meal warm while it rehydrates. Last night, I waited the bare minimum amount of time possible for my food to rehydrate. And it actually rehydrated perfectly. I swear that that is because the water was staying so much warmer in this pouch. And so the food rehydrated better and faster. So this is a huge success for me. Amanda, thank you for this suggestion. Ta-da! Tonight for dinner, we are eating Happy Axe shrimp curry with rice. You know what I'm missing? My Nalgene's for measuring the amount of water after I boil it. <laughs> You're a little position right now. <laughs> wait, wait, don't move, don't move, don't move. <laughs> I can tell you right now that this is definitely going to wind up in my permanent backpacking kit. It's a small addition that makes a world of difference to have warm, well rehydrated food. Wait, Eric, what, what? what is that? Uh, it's the Big Sky International rehydration bag. Like mine? Just like yours. But this is the first trip that I've ever used it on. Really? Yeah. I'm yeah. telling you right now, okay. it will be more efficient, it will be better. All right, I'm, I'm excited. I'm a total, like, total convert. <laughs> so great. Mm, perfectly rehydrated. <laughs> and still, it's very hot. <laughs> it's dark as bananas. That's not a saying. It's dark as the inside of a banana. It's dark as a rotten banana. All right, I'll allow it. <laughs> Today was a really long and exhausting day. We did just hear that we're actually expecting a winter storm to come through the area. That doesn't mean we'll have snow in the canyon, but we could get some rain tomorrow and worse the next day. I'm certainly cozier in this sleeping bag right now than I was last night, which is great. I discovered something super cool about this tent that I didn't realize. There are two hooks in the top of the tent along the ridge line, and I can actually hang my headlamp between them and create like the perfect lighting. All right, with that, I'm gonna go to sleep. I'll check with all of you tomorrow morning. Good night. Oh my gosh, I slept so much warmer last night. I do really think that the problem with this quilt the first night was that I hadn't figured out how to wrap it around myself. We have a really long day of hiking today, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my coffee and my food, get packed up, and hit the trail. We are booking it through the canyon right now. We got word last night that we are actually supposed to be getting a storm coming through in the next couple of days. But starting today and then tomorrow, we're gonna have heavy winds and a chance of precipitation. So luckily it looks like it's not so bad that we need to be concerned about flash floods. The biggest issue could be actually getting back to the trailhead because that road where we started just turns into total peanut butter according to Eric and that is just totally undrivable when it's wet. So we are trying to crank out as many miles as we possibly can today so that tomorrow we have a much shorter day and we can just kind of book it out of the canyon and then make the drive back to where we started. Good news is we have a little bit of sun today so we are soaking that in until the uh, wind and clouds and rain comes. Let's go! Oh, that was such a Miranda, let's go. Let's just 
It's not even dripping. Is anybody else gonna want this guardian? I think almost definitely. So it is around midday right now. We have already done about six miles today. We actually have a kind of gentle breeze that's going through the canyons, and that is indicative of a larger storm that is brewing. Ooh, windy, oh, wow, big wind. We still have about 12 or 13 miles until we get back to the trailhead, so the goal is to crank out at least another six between now and when we camp tonight. We're less concerned about our safety in the canyon, and we're more concerned about even getting access to our car on a way home. Eric has already started hiking, so let's go. Yeah, it probably looks like a beautiful day on camera. And it is. We know a storm is coming and uh, it's also getting quite windy. I don't know if you can tell, but my water bottle is sitting a little bit lower now. I realize that I can shove this in to this mesh pocket a lot further and then tighten this cord and it helps the bottle stay out of my face. So it turns out that was a me problem, not a light AF problem and not even really a smart water bottle problem. Let's go. Really, really big lizard just ran up there. Wow, I wonder what it was. Red Canyon uh, Desert, Desert Newt. A Red Canyon <laughs> Desert Newt? Obviously. Obviously that must be really. what it was. <laughs> I feel like I keep, might possibly poop, but it's a fart. Oh. Right here, this layer that we're walking along, mm -hmm. it looks different than the layer above it. Yeah. It's up. This is the mud shale layer, which is below this. I believe that's Navajo sandstone. We finally like have lowered ourselves enough. We're entering a whole new period of time in the geology wow. of the canyon out here. So we'll be walking along these shelves more. Oh yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Shale, yeah. Shale, yeah. All right, sweet. Well, uh, let's keep hiking because I'm definitely going to poop again today. Oh, well, I'll walk in front. Miranda. I'm sorry. We have a guest in this video. Whatever. I, dude, <laughs> Eric, hold on. I heard your fart this morning. Oh, yeah. When you were filtering water? <laughs> yes. was, I was like 100 yards it away was from you. So loud. It filled the canyon like a canyon wren song. It was like, wah. <laughs> <laughs> one of us, one of us. Oh, so good. Yeah, oh my gosh. I, I feel right at home with you guys. I, yeah, you fit right in. <laughs> Eric attempted to put his leg in right there. You can see his like wet butt stain, but there was no bottom. So how'd that work for you? Good, I just have to do a big step across. What? I can't do that. I can't do that Come on, do it. You can probably step around. I'm gonna step around. Yeah. Somebody's here to keep you from falling in. Like perhaps you. It feels scary. Hee hee hee. Come on. That was an adventure. Oh my God, Miranda. Pull your life together, girl. Hey, hey. It is just about 5 p.m., so we are starting our search for a campsite. We wound up hiking close to 12 miles, I think. Canyon has opened way up. We are just on the hunt for the perfect site for our final night in Perea Canyon. That's all you, dude. Woo! You found this. Uh, <laughs> Good job. Should we just pop three tents in here? Boom, boom, boom. boom, boom, boom. boom. Woo! So the last message that we got about the storm was from Eric's wife. 
it was earlier today. And it looks like primarily the winter storm comes into Flagstaff, Arizona. So right, like tomorrow evening, Friday, but we will get some heavy wind and probably some precipitation here yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. The bigger concern is not actually here in the southern part of our trail. It's actually the northern part of the trail where we started. It doesn't take a lot of rain for that road to just become peanut butter and nobody can drive it. Um, with that, we are going to drop packs, post up and set up camp. Woohoo! Woo woo! Oh yeah. Oh, how about that? Well, that's nice. Eric. I don't need your Nemo chair. So we rolled into camp and I am exhausted. It's kind of funny. The entire day that we were hiking, I felt amazing. As soon as we turned this corner and the three of us came up on this absolutely perfect campsite, my entire body just went, okay, I'm done. <laughs> I am going to slip on my booties and um, make a little snack. That's Rainer. <gasps> There it is. That's Eric. Ah! <laughs> yeah, all right. Okay. What that yell is? No. It's a barbaric yaw. I sound my barbaric yaw over the rooftops of the world. Yaw! <laughs> I don't think that's a barbaric yaw. I think that is a childish shout. What's the difference? <laughs> Can we also talk about the fact that I'm wearing earrings right now? I never wear earrings on trips. No one's commented on it. No one has said anything. Your earrings are lovely. Yeah! <laughs> Damn it! You're the worst. <laughs> We have some really beautiful colors happening. And then the blue, blue sky dotted with these deep gray clouds. And as gorgeous as it is, those deep gray clouds are a little concerning. So we think that those dark clouds are actually an initial small storm that's rolling in. And that storm would be just a little, a little bit of weather in advance of the much larger storm we're anticipating tomorrow. It's beautiful, but it does make me a little bit nervous. <laughs> Hope we make it out in time tomorrow. No pressure. All right, I'm gonna make some food and uh, get cozy. It's gonna be a cold night. I'm eating Cuban rice bowl from Good To Go Foods. Mm. That's good. It was very limey. This is my all-time favorite. It's the Italian sausage and zesty tomato sauce from Pinnacle Foods. Pinnacle is a small company. I've become very fond of them. And this one, they have all the great meals, but this one is like my tops. Tasting notes, tasting notes, please. This may not sound exactly like a compliment, but it tastes like a real dish from like Olive Garden. <laughs> <laughs> People go and spend $20 on this meal right. and it tastes like that. And I did spend $20 on this meal. <laughs> Backpacking is so silly. What are we doing? We're sleeping outside, outrunning a storm, eating extremely expensive dehydrated food, and pooping in bags and carrying it with us. That's the sales pitch. Oh, <laughs> we are in our tents getting ready to go to sleep here. We've actually decided that tomorrow morning we're gonna wake up at 5.45, not necessarily rush out tomorrow morning, but um, definitely move at a fast pace. We probably have somewhere between six and seven miles left to hike. Since the storm looks like it's coming in tomorrow evening, late afternoon, we're hoping that if we get out early enough, we'll totally miss it. This is our last night at camp, and that means it's my last night here in the canyon hiking with Eric and using all of this gear that was recommended to me by a whole number of different outdoor YouTubers. So far, I think the thing that's been coolest about this trip is just getting the opportunity to use gear that other people consider to be their favorite stuff and other people that I would consider to be authorities in the backpacking outdoor space. Getting to just test out gear that they love and really find things that I love in that as well. So far, hiking in this canyon has been incredibly beautiful. It's also been so much fun to be here with Eric Hansen. We've just had such an awesome time. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of sad that this is our last night, honestly. I feel like I could probably do one more. <laughs> I'm gonna get some sleep. Good night.
It's almost 6 a.m. Last night about 2.30 in the morning, we started to get some rain. It made all of us pretty nervous. <laughs> Luckily the rain stopped, but it definitely made me aware of the fact that we are hurrying out of here. Yeah, so basically this morning, our plan is just to pack up all of our stuff, yeah, drink some coffee and eat some breakfast, and then book it out of here. Eric's um, Zolio, which is like a satellite device, picked up a weather report, and that's showing that we'll have about an 18% chance of gentle showers until around four o'clock today. And then the rain's definitely gonna pick up. We will for sure be out of here before 4 p.m. But it's more a question of what has the weather looked like up at Canab, where our car is parked. I am definitely a little, a little anxious about the whole thing and feeling a bit stressed. Um, my bag is basically totally packed up. I will check in with you all when we're on trail. Shall we? Yep. Dummy check? Dummy check. I think we're good. We're good. We just left Terrainer here, and uh, other than that, we're good. There's a really pretty flower on the ground here. We haven't really seen very many flowers. And this one is like a light blue green and has these pretty purpley pink petals, and the top is a little green poof. It's like a head and then the arms are like, okay, it's cute. Woo! Wow, that's lovely. Water's really ripping now. It is a stunning morning on trail. That little spurt of rain that we got last night for sure made think all of us anxious. But right now it's just beautiful. So hopefully this weather holds out for a long time. This is magic. How are we doing, gentlemen? Doing good. <laughs> whoop, whoop. So we are now mostly walking on sand away from the Perea. And it's definitely much faster. It's very different. And uh, it's really cool. Oh my God, guys, look at that wall ahead of us. <gasps> Onward. Almost there! Oh my gosh! Getting close. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, this is super wild, Westy. We just got to the Lee's Ferry Trailhead Register. Eric checked us out, which means we're done! Yeehaw! <laughs> <That's right. laughs> oh my gosh, there's literally a piece of tumbleweed tumbling! Oh, it just got oh, caught in a branch. Abby, can we just get some like photoshopped tumbleweed behind us, please? <laughs> Just Whee! rolling. Yeah, exactly. I want I don't want a big hat. Hold on, where's my high five? Oh, oh. Yeah. good job, bud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we are almost back to Eric's car, which is parked at the southern terminus of the trail. From here, it means that our hiking is done. But we now are essentially racing back to our car that is parked on the northern part of the trail. We're uh, in this like home stretch. We're celebrating. We're obviously really excited that we're done, but uh, also it's like a race against the weather still, so, woohoo. We are finally in the car. Our next stop is the car that Rainer and I need to pick up. We're just kind of zooming on back there, hoping that it doesn't start dumping rain here. It's a race against time. Will they, won't they? The story continues. <laughs> <laughs> We are officially on the road that is the concerning road. So far it's fine, but we still have like 20 miles, 25 miles to go, so. What's like right behind us? A storm. <laughs> 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 Curtains of rain behind. 
bluish skies ahead. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Is it ignorant that now that we're on this road, I'm like, great, we're fine. Because <laughs> that's how I feel. Well, that's good. I don't feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> We made it to our car, which means we are 50% of the way done with the scary road. So as long as we can get out and off the scary road before that impending storm reaches us, we're good. I called the ranger station a little while ago to be like, hey, is that road still drivable? And they were like, yeah, but like get in and get out fast. So that's what we're doing. We survived! Oh, we did it! We're back at the highway. Dude, thank that you was so, so good. much. Oh, absolutely. That was so much fun. Thank you so much. Absolutely. If you do not subscribe to Eric Hansen's channel, make sure you go check it out. Eric has been making content for a long time. Eric also has a video with me of us hiking this canyon on his channel. Yep. For us, the next step is to go home and talk about all the gear that I used from famous YouTubers, yourself included. All right, sick. Um, safe travels. Thank you. I'll see you soon. All right, see you, Miranda. Rainier, come in here. I want to be in here. <laughs> see ya. Bye. So, of all of the gear that was chosen for me, what is going to stay in my core backpacking kit? Definitely some of the smaller items picked for me by Taylor, Justin, and Amanda are certain shoe-ins. I loved this Big Sky International food pouch. It just made such a difference in rehydrating my food quickly. I also deeply loved these booties that were picked for me by Taylor. Using these in conjunction with my Teva sandals was the perfect camp shoe. And as much as I understood the convenience of the smart water bottle, I still I still just don't love that this is not a reusable bottle, even if you do choose to reuse it. So I'm sorry, Dan, this will not be staying in my pack, but this teeny tiny bottle cap suggested to me by Justin Outdoors will definitely be used on my Canuck bottles, at least until I can find a better solution to a reusable bottle similar to the Smart Water. Now let's move on to some of the bigger items. This is a fantastic sleeping pad, and it really was fine for what I used it for. But I am such a Nemo Tensor diehard that I don't foresee myself switching over to the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite, especially because they're very, very similar. Along the same veins would be the tiny Sea to Summit Eros pillow. I didn't hate this. I just love my Nemo Philo Elite pillow. So not making it into my core backpacking kit, but definitely a strong contender if I wasn't already in love with the Nemo Philo Elite pillow. This quilt was fine, but I couldn't quite figure out how to get warm enough in it. And I am already so in love with my enlightened equipment quilt that for me, I think that the burrow is not gonna make its way into my core kit. That being said, this is a fantastic option if you're looking for a quilt that's on the lower price point, but is still ultralight, and maybe just account for a couple extra degrees of warmth if you sleep cold like I do. There were a lot of things I really loved about the rainbow tarp tent. This is the only one person ultralight shelter I have ever seen that can be set up as freestanding using two trekking poles. And I loved that. I was really jealous of Eric's ability to just gaze up at the stars lying in his Nemo Hornet Elite. And that's just not something that I can do with a shelter like this because the rainfly is fully attached. That's to be expected of this tent. This is a single wall tent. But if I were to have chosen a tent for myself, I would have picked something more similar to what Eric had versus what he chose for me. This was the first big backpacking trip that I got to use this Light AF pack, and so far, I love it. I will definitely be using this on future trips on the channel because right now, I'm thinking that it might be a top contender for my favorite backpack of all time. Okay, this was a big one. Huge thank you to Eric Hansen for taking me on this epic adventure in Buckskin Gulch. And as always, if you liked this video, make sure you hit the like button you subscribe to my channel and I will see you outside. Bye. Oh, what a doozy. I'm sweating. <laughs> That's it. Can we go by weight? Here, hold that. That's very clean. Whatever. <laughs> That's three poops in there. That's what else is in there? Do you pack your spare batteries in there too? <laughs> There's a lot of weight in there. It's just three poops. You are a healthy young lady. <laughs> How much does yours weigh? <laughs> Rainer, poop comparison? <laughs> oh, wow. I think uh, Rainer wins. Rainer might win. All right, let's go through this poop. Woohoo!
Oh, oh. that's a badonk. <laughs> <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> right. Let's do it again. <laughs>